Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mengs, and I welcome you guys to the start of a brand new Civilization V playthrough. This time around, I'm going to be playing as Pakal of the Mayan Empire, and I'm going to be going for a culture victory. So, the culture victory is the only type of victory that I've yet to achieve in one of my Civilization V Let's Plays. And I've been avoiding it for quite some time, because it is one of the trickiest victories to pull off. Now, the reason why it's so tricky to pull off is because you need to output more tourism than the other civilization's culture pool. Uh, this is how you become influential. I need to become influential with every single civ in the game. That's how you beat it uh, as a culture victory. Uh, and the reason why this is so tricky is because there's always going to be this one culture fucker in every game that outputs wonder after wonder after wonder after wonder, and has like a billion great works of art, and it's going to be almost impossible to overtake the fucker. Uh, so yeah, uh, you can either solve this by blowing said player up, well that's gonna kind of piss off all the other leaders and gonna escalate into a worldwide war, which is not really gonna help your culture victory. So yeah, it can be a little bit tricky. However, I know of a very cool strategy that you can use as the Mayans. Basically every single Civ can pull this off, but the Mayans just does it, does it so much better than the others. And if you're a little bit lucky and you play your cards right, you can get a very good start using this strategy. And um, it might work, it might not work. We'll have to see, depending on the game. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that strategy, but first we're going to talk about the Mayans. So their civilization bonus is called the Long Count. It quickly summarized gives you great people. That's pretty much how it works. Once you research theology, you're going to get the choice between a few great people every so often. Um, you can't pick the same great person twice. You can't spam scientists. That would be horrendously overpowered. Um, but you can, like, for example get a great engineer and snatch a wonder early that you otherwise wouldn't be able to get, it opens up a lot of possibilities. You could even get a prophet for a religion. All sorts of good things you can do with this. So it's one of the better civilization bonuses, in my opinion. Then we have the Atlantists. It is one of the weakest units in the game, actually, if not the weakest. This is basically just an archer that doesn't require archery. So you can build it a little bit earlier, but you still need archery tech to get the wheel. So it's not like you can forego archery. You still need to get it really quick. Um, so for that reason alone, this, this unit is really weak. Now, they did buff it ever so slightly. Uh, it's just a tiny buff, but the Atlantis is now also a little bit cheaper. Uh, to give you guys a comparison, I'm playing on normal speed. Archers on normal speed cost 40 hammers. This guy costs 36, so it's roughly a 5 to 10% reduction. Uh, yeah, around, I think it's exactly 10%, actually, because 10% uh, of 40 is uh, 4, and this guy costs 36. So yeah, they're 10% cheaper, which means that you might get it out of turn earlier, if even that. So, for that reason alone, they kind of suck. Now, the good thing about unique units in this game is that when they have promotions, the promotions carry on with them. Like, for example, the Companion Cavalry, just to name a random unique unit that the Greeks can build, has a promotion which generates great generals more frequently. And they will take this promotion with them when they become Knights, Cavalry, uh, Lancers, you know, the whole upgrade shenanigans. Whereas this guy becomes obsolete the moment you research uh, Composite Bowman tech, which is why it kind of sucks. It won't even fight Barbarians more easily, because you could still get as many Archers as you could at Lattice. You just, you know, could build them a little bit earlier. So yeah, however, this is offset by the fact that the Mayans have one of the best unique buildings in the entire game, and that is the Pyramid. And this thing is so good, I cannot even begin to overstress how good this building is. So it replaces the Shrine. Uh, and you all, like, unique buildings that replaces one of the basic starting buildings is always amazing. Like, unique buildings that replaces the monument and shit like that, you always want them because it means you get them out immediately and get their bonuses immediately towards the rest of the game. Now, the pyramid not only outputs twice the amount of faith, 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 I always say this wrong, not only outputs twice the amount of faith that the shrine does, but in addition to that, it also gives plus two bonus to science, and this is insane. This is like having an extra library in the early game. Now, libraries, I will output two science whenever there's a four-pop city, uh, which means that the pyramids, up until cities get pop uh, four, are much better than libraries. It essentially means that you get two plus extra science in every city, uh, which is insane. It gives you a science boost early on, as well as a fate boost. You're gonna get a uh, pantheon much quicker, and you're going to get your techs much quicker. So the Mayans are amazing for that reason alone. Now I'm going to talk more about this tourism strategy once we get into the game. Um, so let's take a look at our starter location, shall we? So from the get-go, I see that we should definitely move our settler. Um, 
there is a mountain here and we want to settle close to a mountain. Now what I like to do is I like to send my first warrior up into the hills. It will give me a nice overview. And we can see that there's cocoa here. Uh, cocoa is one of the new luxury resources that was added not so long ago, I think. A pretty good, uh, pretty darn good resource actually. It gives food and gold. Um, but I think what I want to do is I want to move my settler over to this hilltop right here. Because that would give me an observatory as well as the river city. And I still have these cocoa tiles within three, uh, three tiles. So I will get them eventually. And there might also be hidden resources in the fog right here. So that is what I'm going to do. So uh, I'm going to start off by building a scout. That is usually always what I do. And uh, we're going to check for neighbors. Ruins and barbarians. Always a good start. One is offset by the other. I'm going to go for pottery very quickly because that's going to unlock the pyramid. And I do want to build a pyramid very quickly. Because the pyramid is amazing. And we're going to see if we can't snatch that ruin. Now, uh, as a um, civilization that wants to go for a culture victory, you don't necessarily want super aggressive early neighbors. But it doesn't hurt either to have close neighbors. Because that will make uh, concert spamming a little bit more easy. Now, we got the uh, Barbarian Encampment reveal uh, on the ruins. Never a good thing, in my opinion. It's like one of the weakest ones to get, I think. That and map. Unless the map reveals additional ruins, that is. Uh, I prefer to get culture and faith. Because uh, faith usually means you get a pantheon. Alright, we find Mount Kilimanjaro. Mount Kilimanjaro is a very unique wonder in the fact that it gives every single unit that passes near it a unique promotion that grants them double movement in hills as well as the plus 10 combat strength in hills. It's the basic uh, promotion that all Inca units get. However, there is also a ruin here, and in, out of fear that a scout will snatch this ruin away from me, I'm going to grab this before I get the promotion on my warriors. In fact, I want to get this promotion on my scouts as well, so I'm going to send them up here. Because scouts that have the Mount Kilimanjaro promotion can move four tiles through enemy, or not through enemy hills, I don't know why I said enemy. They can move four tiles through hills, which is pretty fucking amazing. Now, I think I'm going to go for a monument now. I could build an Atlantis if I wanted to, but I already have a warrior and a scout, so I think I'll be fine. Uh, you want to get this monument out early because I do not plan to go the tradition opener. I plan to go a piety opener, which is normally something you never want to do. But... For this strategy, it will actually work. Or, it it might work. I'm not going to say it works for guaranteed. Because the piety opener is usually very weak. Uh, it's not something you want to do. Okay, so we get some spearmen. That's good. Uh, it's going to help us a little bit with the barbarians. I might send the spearmen over here and clear out this encampment. It would certainly help. But I'm going to get the Mount Kilimanjaro promotion first. Uh, I'm going to snatch these ruins. And I get population, which is actually the best thing you could possibly get. That is one of the things I, I didn't mention uh, earlier. Getting population is insane. Because it just means that everything in your city produces quicker. I'm going to try to rush for an early game wonder. I'm going to try to get Stonehenge. Because uh, Stonehenge is uh, actually pretty uh, detrimental to my strategy. Because it relies on getting a religion out very early. And hopefully you should be able to get the first religion because if you don't get the first religion, then you may not get the um, the follower beliefs you want. So I'm going to try to get a religion. And uh, there are some very special traits I need to get in my religion in order for this strategy to work. Now, if you take a look at the scout now, you can see that I can actually move very far through hills. Uh, it's actually quite broken. It's why the Inca are so good, because they get this uh, promotion from the get-go on their scouts. So, they are super good for that reason. Now, we need Calendar, so I'm going to rush for Calendar. And once I'm done with Calendar, I'm actually going to go for Bronze Working. Now, the reason why I need Bronze Working is because there's a lot of jungle tiles there. And I want to improve these banana tiles. Normally, uh, you wouldn't want to improve banana tiles. Because you're basically cutting away the jungle. And then you are... Um, and then you are um, adding a plantation on top of that. Oh, it's this fucker. Which actually offsets the food. However, I do plan to take uh, Oral Tradition as my pantheon. Because uh, I see so many plantations around my city. Which means I want to build plantations immediately. Anyway, this fucker. This is the douchiest guy in all of civilization. This fucker right here will do everything in his power to piss you off. He's probably the worst neighbor. Okay, no, Shaka is definitely a worst neighbor. But Alexander is one of the trickiest guys to have close to you. Because it's impossible to maintain friendship with him. 
he denounces you, he steals your territory, he goes to war with you too, but that's like, yeah, this guy really just wants to piss you off. Um, the best way to counter Alexander is to make sure he pisses off the other guys more than he pisses you off, uh, and eventually they're going to be so sick and tired of him that they go to war, that's at least the plan. But since his scout is here, it means he's probably taken all of the ruins on his way, so I'm not going to try to to go and see if I can find some. I'm going to start working on my pyramid now. And uh, once I have that, I will pretty much be guaranteed a pantheon. Now, one of the things you can also do is try to find a, a religious city-state. That also works. Um, but the Mount Kilimanjaro promotion really makes it easy for me to explore in the early game, as you can see right here. The best thing would be if I could get plus two vision upgrade on my scouts. That would be even better. Okay, so we've met Hanoi, which is a militaristic city-state. Um... Pretty awesome to have militaristic city-states be your allies, especially against Alexander. The thing about Alexander is that he loves his city-states, and he's most likely going to befriend most of them, uh, because he is the Greeks. It is his uh, nature to ally himself with city-states, which makes it a little bit tricky uh, if you want to actually try to grab city-states yourselves. And if you as much as touch city-states, he will be so mad. He loves to pledge protection to every single city-state he meets, it's basically how he likes to do things. So let's see. Uh, we actually found Vatican City. And I love uh, religious city-states because they give you eight faith if you are the first one to discover them. So we are actually only two faith away from getting our Pantheon. I'm going to grab Piety. And the great thing about grabbing the Piety opener is that it's going to halve the time for me to build my unique uh, building. Because it's treated as a shrine. And the Piety opener halves the time in which you build shrines and temples. So you're going to get your pyramid out a lot sooner. And uh, I learned Barbarian Encampments again. It's my second one, actually. It's uh, quite annoying, to be quite honest. Um, I might buy myself an Atlatist, because they're really cheap at 180 gold. Um, so when I do reach that amount, I might try to go for one. We'll have to see. Uh, but it seems like we've reached the eastern shoreline, so I'm actually going to back off. And I'm going to see what's down here. Oh! Oh, it's Gustavus Adolphus. We meet again, my friend. Is there a single game where I haven't encountered this fucker? Like, he's been part of every single game I've ever had, I think. Almost. Um, yeah, Gustavus Adolphus. He's going to be a pain in the ass. But he's close to Alexander, which is a blessing in disguise. I might manage to make them attack each other. Alright, I have three turns, or two turns, until I can get my calendar. Um, I do really want to get the Stonehenge, so what I could do is I could get another scout out. It probably wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Um, as far as the Pantheon goes, I'm, I've already kind of decided that I'm going to go for Oral Tradition, because there's so many plantations around my capital, and not to mention here, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, yeah, there's more plantations than I care to count. Oral Tradition is the definite thing to go for. I could have picked Sun God as well. It would have given me plus one food from Banana Tiles. Which is amazing, but... I really want culture in this game. I am going for a freaking culture victory after all. So yeah, I'm gonna get a scout out. And I'm gonna send him up to get the Cal uh, Mount Kilimanjaro uh, promotion. And send him out to scout the world. I should also really find out what's next to my capital. So, just in case there's a ruin there or something that I've overlooked. Look at there. Uh, the ruin that Sweden never bothered with. Good for me. Huh. That's the first time I see bison, actually. Very interesting. This is not a luxury resource. This is These are just like cows. Huh. So like cattle. I mean, they're exactly like cattle, aren't they? Plus one food. Yeah. Interesting. I, I mean, they probably just... Okay. I think you actually construct camps on the bison. Instead of a pasture. When worked by... Yeah, that's pretty cool, actually. They do keep adding new things to Civilization V every so often, which I think is very cute. Like, I like the fact that they're updating their game, even though they released uh, Beyond Earth, which sucks, by the way. Seriously, it's so disappointing, that game. I can't even be asked to play it. Alright, ruins. So now we're gonna grab Stonehenge. We're already on production focus, and we're gonna keep keep it that way. Our city's gonna grow to pop four pretty soon. And looky there, a ruin right next to my city. That always happens when you don't explore fully. So I'm gonna scout a little bit ahead because I think that I'm I'm definitely sure this is the east coast. So there's not gonna be that much to explore here. And um, 
Then I'm going to go and get the Monk Kilimanjaro promotion on my scout and send them west. Okay, great. So we're going to get another free policy as well as another pop. And that was one turn away from having that snatched by Sweden. So I'm going to go up here and see if there's any ruins here because this Swedish scout probably came from the south. I'm pretty sure he came from the south. And uh, yeah, I'm going to see if I can snatch any ruins away from him before he actually goes up there. It also looks like there would be a city-state there, just by the layout of the map. I don't know why. Call it Civilization Instinct. I just feel like there's going to be a city-state up here. Ah, see there? Border. I don't know. There was just something about the way the map worked. City-states like to be out on, on pointy edges like that. All right. I'm going to grab Organized Religion as my second traits, uh, or my second policy. It's not really going to do much for me. It's going to give me one extra faith. But in the end game, it's going to give plus two uh, faith from every city, because you do want a shrine and a temple in every city with this strategy. This strategy, as you may have guessed, focuses heavily on religion. It is kind of the way it works. And um, so the whole, the, like the whole ideal situation would be if there weren't any super religious... Uh, uh, leaders in this game i'm actually going to send my spare back now because it's starting i'm starting to reach the point where i'm going to uh, start to get a worker so i want to be able to protect them from barbarians especially considering there's an encampment right here so if uh, isabella or montezuma is in this game i'm gonna have a very bad time because they're very aggressive religion uh, fanatics uh harun al-rashid is also very aggressive and when it comes to his religion all right archer scouts that's decent i suppose all right, I don't think there's going to be any ruins over here, so I'm just going to send these scouts over to Mount Kilimanjaro. I do like... I, the city-state is going to snatch them anyway, but I do like the fact that it's a city-state and not a, actually another uh, civilization that snatches Mount Kilimanjaro. I mean, Antananarivo is going to snatch this anyway. I can never pronounce that. Antananarivo? The fuck gave it that name? There is... I do believe the Celts can get the longest city name in the game. It's like, it's super long. It's insane. It's like 30 letters long. It's the longest city name in the world. Pretty insane. Alright. Looks like we're exploring the uh, whole lot of nothing over there. So I haven't really built any workers yet. I might steal a worker. I'm not sure if I want to steal it from Genoa because they're so close to me. But I could check. I haven't really gotten any improvements yet, which is not great. But this Mount Kilimanjaro promotion does such wonders for your early game exploration. It's pretty insane. Uh, so we have another Pantheon. Pantheon, actually. Plus two faith from Quarries, which is decent. Um, as a piety opener, I will be able to get this one, Religious Tolerance. Which is that I also get the second most popular Pantheon belief. So if that is the plus two quarry thing, it means my quarries are going to be a lot better. So that's great. Plus two faith from quarries is definitely not something I'd sneeze at. Okay, I think I'm going to send these guys and root out the uh, encampment here. Because it's spawning barbarians and I don't like that. Now many people say that clearing out barbarian encampments in the early game is quite useless. So I'm actually going to snatch this warrior just to get some experience. Because once you defeat an encampment, another one will spawn very quickly thereafter. And this is actually true. Uh, but it is actually completely fine to uh, to kill encampments. Because um, more often than not, the encampments are going to spawn further and further away. So you can actually press the encampments closer towards the enemy AIs. So by killing encampments, you are actually pressuring the barbarians closer to your enemies. Which is actually a good thing. Alright, we're going to go for writing. I do need my library. I cannot neglect science in this game. If you neglect science, like, the reason why science is so important is because the ultimate endgame goal is to reach internet. That is really the tech you need. Okay, I'm not going to beeline for internet. But this one doubles tourism output. And for that reason alone, uh, it is pretty goddamn good. Um, like, the Great Firewall counters the internet. So you got to make sure you try and get that wonder yourself. But if you can get the internet up and you have a strong position, then you will usually win the game very quickly after obtaining the internet, if you play correctly. If you kind of win the game after internet is researched, then you have screwed up in some regard. Alright, I'm gonna grab Drill, I think, because there's so much rough terrain here, and I gotta be careful not to lose my spearman. He's, I probably could snatch a worker. Uh, might not be such a terrible idea. I could go snatch a worker from Antananarivo. 
But when the city states don't trust you, they will usually pull you their workers back. I hope that Alexander hasn't met Ormus yet, or this city state, because if if he if he has met them, he's gonna be pretty pissed if I try to steal it away. Um I'm just gonna fortify a little bit. Have they built a worker? Doesn't look like it. Okay, let's see if he pulls it back or not. I think I'm too far away. Guess we'll find out. Oh, it's Bishmark! Hello, Bishmark. How are you doing? So we got three really aggressive civilizations close to each other here. You got uh, Gustavus Adolphus here, you got Alexander here, and you got Bishmark over here. This is actually potentially great for me because I could make them fight each other. And note that Alexander is in the middle of the two. That's probably the best placement I could have possibly gotten him in because he's going to piss off his neighbors. That's what Alexander does. He pisses off neighbors. He like goes, I'm going to denounce you, you fucker. Um, and um, for that reason alone, I think I could perhaps persuade Bishmark and um, and Gustavus into becoming friends. Oh, yeah, see that shit? You see that shit? He pledges protection to me. You know, fuck you, Alexander. I don't even care. There is no way I, I can become friends with him anyway. And just you wait. He's gonna bitch. He's gonna bitch right now. He's gonna be super angry. But I will just say our apologies. We will withdraw immediately. Uh, I'm not, I, don't, I do not plan to continue the attack on Ormus, but already I think I have solidified Alexander as my number one enemy in this game. Because he will not forget this very easily. Let's just say that. Um, I do think I want to escort my scouts. I, think, I do think that's quite important. I don't think these, wor these workers will survive very long on their own. Now, you can't give promotions to workers. That will be overpowered as fuck. Imagine having workers moving at twice. <laughs> look at these scouts. Just look at them. Imagine having workers move through uh, hills at double the speed. I am actually going to snatch this one. Okay, now I have writing. So now I'm going to go for... I have bronze working, so that's great. I'm going to go for trapping, and then I have to go for the wheel. This is one of the reasons why the archery tech is so important. You need the wheel. Um, also, I don't like the fact that these guys are flanking me. I really don't. I'm probably going to help out a little bit with my scout. Um, I'm just going to get some experience here. I don't think I can gra gra get vision promotions with my athletists. I think they can only get drill and shock, which is or barrage and accuracy, which is a shame. Yeah, uh, so I'm going to grab Barrage. At least it's going to make them a little bit better. Alright, we have met Zurich and gotten 30 gold. And, like, none of... Like, Mandate of Heaven doesn't really do anything for me, nor does Theocracy. Theocracy is amazing, by the way. 25% uh, extra gold in your city is no joke, but you can't get temples at this stage anyway. And I want the Reformation Belief. That's the whole key here. So I'm going to grab Religious Tolerance. That is most likely going to give me... Uh, so there are three pantheons, one which gives uh, extra city range combat strength, one which gives culture from plantations, that's mine, and extra col extra faith from quarries, which is actually pretty good. Alright. Um, worker is getting closer. I'm probably going to help out with my scouts and fights and try to get perhaps a vision promotion or two on the guy. Uh, scouts with two vision promotions and one Kilimanjaro upgrade can literally scout the entire map. It's pretty insane. All right, we got... That's not great, actually. Um, so I'm actually going to fortify right now because I'm really afraid of my my spearmen. I think they could actually die. Because now they're getting flanked and getting shot at. So I need to help out with my archer. Uh, while also... Okay, the, the archer is actually leaving. Good. Um, that's fine. I'm going to fortify one more turn with my spearmen. And I think I need to also fortify up with my Athletist, because I don't like archers walking around on 75% um, on hit points. That is not a good recipe if you want to survive. Alright, now my scouts can actually start help outs. And I'm not sure if this is a battle my scouts can win, actually. But what I could do is I could use my workers to bait the archers. So what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm saying to the archers, hey, go capture my workers. And they will fall for that, and I can attack next turn without getting shot at in the meanwhile, which is what I'm hoping will happen. Because barbarians do like to capture workers whenever they're available to them, instead of fighting. As you can see, it worked out. And now I got the barbarian encampments, and hopefully 
I can kill these guys later because now the archers are gonna be trying to uh, oh, oh not you again there's the leader that kicked my ass last game with stealth of fucking bombers fucking retarded shits so yeah um, they're actually gonna be escaping me um, uh, how am I gonna do this well I can easily catch up to the archer um, this actually wasn't as easy as I, as, as I thought. I thought I'd be a lot stronger than this. Alright, I'm gonna rest up here. Um, I think she's gonna get away. Um, I'm busy with Dido, sure. She's so far away anyway. I don't really mind that. But right now, I think this worker is gonna get away. Unless... Okay, I got Stonehenge. Oh, I need to rest up for a turn. I really need to rest up for a turn. Now I need to grab a library, and after that I'm going to expand. I have a like set rule of thumb that you should always get your first Excuse library. Me. No, I don't want Embassy with Bishmark. He's too close to me. You always want a library before expanding. At least most of the time. That's a nice rule to have. I try to make it a point to expand before my city reaches high pop. So I'm a little bit late on that. But that's because I, tr I, tr I tried to get a, a wonder... Okay, they will do 17 damage to me, and I have 15 hit points. That is not going to amount to a happy ending. So, I'm going to pray that they move south. They didn't. Okay. Well, I'm going to catch up to them. I will. Oh, no. Well, that's not good. Well, there goes my worker. <laughs> but I can buy a new one now, so I guess it's not that huge of an issue. But yeah, this wasn't great. Um, but at least I got a scouting promotion out of it, so I guess it's not the end of the world. And I could always just buy another wor a worker. But yeah, this wasn't fantastic. Um, I'm gonna have to fight a hand axe now. And luckily, though, my my, my spearman got a, a second drill promotion, which means they're gonna get a 30% combat strength here. But I do need to heal up my shit first. Anyway, I'm gonna go grab the cotton. I do have calendar, so it's gonna be easy for me to uh, get that resource. But yeah, I gambled a little bit with the archer. I could have attacked it. Uh, it was a stalemate, so the RNG could have gone in my favor. But it sucks to lose units early, and I would like to not take the chance. But the scout can at least get his sweet revenge on the archer. And I'm gonna go and, and get fetch my... Sp oh, yeah, at least I'm gonna get a second worker, which is good. You always want approximately two workers per city that way when you do expand you can uh, you can start to uh, I think actually Palenque is stuck on production focus which is completely fine because I don't really need it to uh, to grow yet but once I get my library oh hello there it's the best sieve in the game yeah England is literally the best sieve in the entire game uh, not necessarily in the hands of the computer, but as a skilled player. They have Longbowman and Ship of the Line, which are the two best units in the game by far. Um, Shaka's MPs come close, but Longbowman, simply for the reason that they promote into Gatling Guns with two range, and the Ship of the Line are just frigates, which are already amazing. That's a uh, natural wonder right there. And they get an extra spy, which is insane. You know, like... People, people, I don't think people realize how big of a deal an extra spy is in the early game. Like, the fact that I could steal two technologies instead of one is insane. It's batshit insane. Um, it allows you to catch up so much quicker. Anyway, we're going to start working on our settler now. Uh, we're suffering a little bit of a uh, disadvantage in gold, but that's going to fix itself once we get this uh, plantation going. And since we uh, already... Have like are my border have my borders grown that far? No, uh, we do we do need to work uh, get these plantations working asap, and we do also need to lock this tile actually, so that we won't suffer uh so we won't suffer the gold penalty. We're actually still suffering a little bit of a gold penalty, which I don't like. Uh, I also don't know why this masonry icon is bugged. Always been this way for some weird reason. I'm actually gonna rush for theology right now so I can get my great person. Uh, after I get masonry, of course, because masonry is such an important tech, especially considering I have a quarry or a stoneworks outside my uh, capital. Another natural wonder? No, it was a, it was a barbarian encampment. Okay. What I could do is I could attack with the scout into the hand axe together with my spearman. That way, 
I could uh, possibly get another vision promotion on them. Might be the case. Uh, Bishmark wants declaration of friendship. Yes, I think I will. Um, I need friends against Alexander. That is actually going to be quite important. Now, have I reached the end of the... Yeah, this is the south coast. So, uh, it means there's not going to be a huge... Uh, I guess I could grab the embassy with him right now. Um, like, wow. Look at that. Alexander already pissing off people by, like, settling directly. Like, this is such an Alexander move. He is truly Dushimus Maximus. Like... Ah, I'm just gonna settle a Corinth right next to Berlin. You're fine with that, okay? Yeah, that's fine. And since we're already so big on the embassies, so I'm gonna grab one with Sweden as well. If I could grab a declaration of uh, friendship with both Sweden and Berlin, that'd probably be the ideal dream scenario. Alright, we're gonna bring back the worker. These scouts will help with their flanking bonus. You do get a 10% bonus, which is nothing to sneeze at. Uh, in, like, overall, I'm getting a lot of positive combat modifiers right here. I have a 17... Like, these guys are, are as strong as pikemen, pretty much. Yeah, I want to attack anyway. What are you talking about? What could possibly go wrong? Uh, they've also fixed barbarians now, so that barbarians no longer move the turn they spawn, which was complete and utter bullshit. Ha <laughs> ha no, no, dude. I don't want an embassy with you. I don't want Alexander to know where my capital is. At all. Alright. Um... I'm going to stay here with my scouts to provide the flanking bonus. But I'm not going to attack with them. Not at all. They are very far... They are very close to getting their second promotion. So I might get a scout with two scouting promotion. Which would be pretty kick-ass, actually. Uh, no, I need to kill these guys. Right, I could return it. But fuck no, I'm not going to do that. I was the one who stole it initially. Stupid game. Alright, so we've reached uh, the English. They are over there. Uh, seems to be like a little bit of a split. You got like four civilizations here, and you seem to have the other four civilizations here. There are eight civilizations in total. So I can already see what kind of, like, what type of map this is. Uh, I'm actually not going to attack right now. I'm gonna wait. I would love for my scout to get a second promotion. That would be so sweet. Although, I guess that you could say that I've already explored a lot, so it wouldn't, like, be a huge deal, but I still want to try and go for it, because what's so great about a scout with uh, Scouting 2 is that you can place him on a hill, and you could have complete control. Nice. Just look at this. Whoa! Look how much shit he can see. He can see everything. So, you'd never be sneak attacked if you just place this fucker on, uh, on a cliff or something like that. And you're good. You're pretty good. Good to go. Alright, gotta be careful now so I don't lose this uh, spearman. It's actually not gonna be uh, so easy to kill this warrior. I guess I could do this to get a flanking bonus. Then I could kill him that way. Ooh. Scary. I'm gonna... Actually, you can take my worker. I'm gonna bait him into doing that again. Alright, we have a settler, guys. Um, I think a caravan actually wouldn't be a terrible idea. But at the same time... Um, a watermill is probably what I want to go for now, because it's just a, an amazing building overall. Now, this is a... It, it recommends I settle here, and that's actually a great location, because look at all the resources I'm going to get. Cocoa... I'm going to get three sources of cocoa, four banana tiles... No, wait, that's, that belongs to my capital. Um, two sources of uh, cattle, or... Uh, sorry, one source of cattle and horse. One could say that, yes, there's a river here, but I don't want to settle so close to Alexander. I'd prefer for him to fight with Bismarck. And that's... I'm not gonna try to... <laughs> I'm not gonna make myself a valuable target to him. You know, I'm just gonna kill this one. Probably a much better way to do things. Um, yes, that is definitely the right way to do things. Statue of Zeus has been built in a faraway land. I can guarantee you Alexander was the one who built that. He loves his Statue of Zeus. It's one of the wonders he loves the most. Um, go, go go figure. <laughs> but yeah, he, he really does love that. Okay, we need to get these spearmen back to the capital. And these scouts just need to heal up for a while. 
because of this worker, these settlers had to take a long detour, so it's going to delay the uh, expansion of my city for a little bit, but it's okay. We're going to get two pl plantations up and our first religion, which is amazing. So let's go ahead and found the religion of Manxism. Um The more I look at this game, let's correctly spell, right? There are two choices. I could either get World Church or Tithe. Tithe is just a solid one overall, um, because it just gives gold. Uh, World Church is a little bit more tricky, because it requires you to spread your religion aggressively to other cities. Uh, but if you can actually get it into other cities, then it's going to give you a shit ton of culture. But I think I'm going to go for Tithe, simply because it's so much easier for me. Because it gives me a bonus without having to aggressively spread my religion, which is not really what this focuses on. And gold is just good. As far as the follower belief goes, uh, cathedrals are always great, but I think I'm going to go for pagodas. Mosques did get buffed recently, I think. Uh, I don't think they always used to give tree faith, did they? Or am I just... Anyway, pagodas are my favorite uh, building. And I'm going to, like, it's going to be very important for me to get these buildings, because uh, I will tell you once I get another policy, which I will get in... Which I will get in six turns. And you'll, and you'll see why these buildings are so important. Hey, what? Okay, I thought I thought he moved on top of my settling location, but then I realized it's over here. Well, hello there, Alexander. How nice of you to settle, like, right in my fucking territory. I'm gonna fucking block you. You fucking ass. You're not the only one who can be douchey as Maximus. I'm gonna be douchey a fucking Maximia. Alright. Let's uh, go settle. I can actually just park my spearmen on top of these guys. And I think I can send these workers down to improve the cocoa right away. Uh, once I settle the city, I can guarantee you that uh, Alexander is going to start whining and complaining that I'm settling too close to him. I think he's going to try to grab this location right here. But it's very close to a city state, which is, of course, what he loves. But we'll have to see. Maybe, that, uh, maybe me expanding here will make him go a little bit further away. I don't know. Anyway, let's go grab the cocoa, and we got Tikal. Now, what's so great about the religion opener, or the piety opener, is that I can build my pyramids much quicker. This would normally take 40 turns, but since I have the piety opener, I'm going to be able to do it in 20. Which is still not amazing, but it saves me a lot of turns. And I'm going to get that sweet, sweet uh, faith and uh, science. Alright, I'm taking some damage. I don't think this is what a fight I want to fight. Hello, Yerevan. And, uh, yeah, things are going... I'd say this is a good opener. Um, he wants an embassy. He's not going to get one. <laughs> I'm not interested in letting him know where my capital is. For all intents and purposes, he may not be aware of where it is yet. Anyway, uh, I'm going to see... Yeah, he's actually moving quite far away, which is interesting. Quite interesting. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, probably long enough for part one. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Do please consider leaving a like and a comment if you want to see more. It really helps this Let's Play uh, get more featured in the search engine on YouTube. So it does really matter a whole deal. And I would like to expand my civilization audience because I know that this is something that more people would be interested in watching. And uh, as always... Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.